Sooner Scoop HD. Uh, you talked a little bit after the game, the, the performance you guys had at defending the run against Iowa State. Just how big was that? Does that give kind of momentum going into the season, especially when you face a, a guy like Richard Reese and Baylor this weekend? Well, yeah, it was. It was. Uh, there were a lot of improvement, uh, and at the same time, you know, there's a lot of things that we got to get better at. But we certainly did a better job against that. Uh, you know, but could have been better. Uh, you know, the quarterback scramble there. Or I think it was a 28 yard gain there, and then the fourth quarter that was uh that was disappointing but uh, overall yeah i mean there was it was improvement there was an improved physicality uh but there's still a lot of meat left on the bone and uh hopefully that that does give us some confidence and uh, but again you s the, the work ethic and the belief and the commitment of our guys you see a uh, incremental improvement and there certainly was that and uh we need we need to, to do the same thing this week because uh better's really really physical up front and uh they're going to pound the ball and uh, I think the last uh, the, the, the running back of the last two games he's played has had over uh, 30 carries in both the games so uh, you know they're, they're they're committed to running the football and then all the things that come off a, a, a very uh, very efficient very good run game all the play actions the boots the things that the screens the things that come off of it you know when you start adding people to the box to take care of the run game um, you know the then you then you got to play the deep balls. So uh, there's a lot of challenges and a lot of opportunities at the same time, and uh, it'll be a big challenge for us. And we got to have a great week of preparation. Sure. Let's go to Red Avery. Yeah, Ted. What was your assessment of Billy Bowman's performance on Saturday, and and how close do you feel like he was to where he was when he got hurt? And just uh, where do you think he is as far as mobility wise? Well, it was good to have him back. Um, because he's one of the better, better, best football players on our team. Uh, so it was good to have him back. There wasn't a lot of practice, and he practiced a couple of days before that. So for him to get back out there was certainly a, a, a real positive for us. Uh, and at the same time, uh, to knock some of the rust off, uh, because any time you, you, you miss as much time, especially for a young player, you know, Billy's still a, a very young player and is certainly young in this system. Uh, so it was good to, to get him back out there, good to have him, and, uh, you know, it be good to, to take the next step this week. And uh, with having him back, how much does that change things as far as the, the makeup back there? I know you've used some young players quite a bit when he, he'd been out and had to shift, obviously, some with Woody there. Yeah. How much does that help and, and change things on the back? Well, it certainly helps, uh, you know, and at the same time, the positives that came out of that were some of those young guys got you know valuable game reps and there's no substitute for that so there was some positive that that was the positive that came out of it and uh, you know which should give us you know as we continue to go through the season uh, a little bit more depth with some guys that have had some some game reps you know sure Bob Prisvilla. yeah Ted what were your initial thoughts on Deshaun White when you were evaluating him during the winter and how has it changed or what has impressed you the most now that you've been able to coach him? Uh, I knew he was a, a guy that had a lot of ability and uh, had been a solid player um, and he played his best football game this past Saturday. Uh, he's become more physical, um, more uh, decisive when he makes a decision. He sees it and he goes uh, and playing with more confidence and uh, you know, he's been playing well for us and need to continue to him to, you know, finish his Oklahoma career in the, in the right way. Ted, with a running back like Richard Reese, who's just seemingly stepped in and found his footing in the Big 12, what impresses you most about a freshman running back in general who can really just translate straight from, from high school to this level? Well, playing as a freshman in this league is, is tough to begin with. And, uh, you know, not just playing, but playing at the level that he's played at when post the kind of numbers that he's had uh, he's very tough he's powerful uh, he's patient and lets, sets up his blockers and then when he sees it he bursts and uh, you know he, he runs through arm tackles we've got uh, again watching watching him on tape uh, a lot of respect for him and uh, know we're going to have to to wrap up and tackle really well in order to get him down Saturday, Brent talked about the kicking game on the whole as a weapon for you guys, but Michael Turk all year has hunted among the best in the nation, and I guess what kind of a weapon can he be for this, is he for this defense, and what might 
that was the most on the outside not recognized about what he gives you guys and setting you guys up? Well, he had a couple huge plays in that game the other day to, to flip the field um, and, and give us field position. And football always has been, always has been, and always will be a game of field position. And uh, you know, he's he's had a fantastic year, and uh, you know, we like to see those uh, rocket ships take off. Yeah. James Hale. How good of a cover game was it for you in this game? And on the flip side, um, Baylor's offensive line, maybe the best offensive line you're going to face this year? Yeah. Um, well, like I said, it was a step in the right direction, a step forward, uh, and, you know, pleased with the improvement. And at the same time, the process doesn't change. We're going to, you know, we've got to get better this week. And you're right, a very experienced, very veteran offensive line that's extremely physical. Uh, well coached and uh, you know very very efficient and you know it's uh, it's, it's going to be a real challenge because they are one of the best units yeah. Far right in the front Justin. Hey coach. Hey, Justin. Uh, sticking with the defensive line you know the stat everyone wants to throw out is they <laughs> finally got their first sack in conference play but I mean just what specifically do you see that they can really build off of from that last game against Iowa State? Uh, the, the physicality uh, you know took a step in the the right direction from a physicality standpoint. Still got a lot of like room for improvement, areas for growth. Uh, but yeah, they took a step in the right direction as I thought you know our defense did. But it's that's last week. Now it's this week, and we got to do the same thing. Yeah, sure. Hey, over there, Ryan Chapman. Uh, talk about the interceptions. It seemed like Woody's and, and Danny specifically had an element of kind of anticipation, reading what's going on there. Oh, what? element of anticipation okay, kind of written yeah, yeah does that speak to just a, a comfort level as you've pressed on in this year in the new defense that, that those guys are settling in being able to kind of anticipate read the, read the game a lot better and enforce those turnovers yeah i think it does i think that uh, you know what he went up and you know that is a 50 50 ball and, and he won and he made a big play there at the end of the game too for us uh and, and danny had uh, on justin's interception danny had put some color underneath the the receiver and forced the quarterback to, to throw it high, and Justin was in great position and picked it off. And then on uh, on Danny's ball, his interception, uh, he was you know playing zone coverage and playing off the eyes of the quarterback, vision and break. And uh, you know that uh, any time you you take the ball away, it's uh, big plays. And uh, you know to to put our offense on a short field to play complimentary football. And uh, you know we've done that this year. It's uh, it's proved to to bode well for us like it does most every year when you take the ball away. Early in the season when those things aren't coming to uh, Brent has talked about, it seems like guys are second guessing at times, things like that. But to, to settle in and make that, is that speak to just mentally how far one's come along just in the system throughout the year? Well, I think it's certainly a, a sense of increased confidence and improvement. Uh, so yeah, to your point, yeah, that certainly that. And at the same time, again, there's just, there's so much more meat left on the bone that we got to get, you know, we got to, we're in a race against the clock to get better. Yeah. Yeah, Ted, uh, question on the defensive line. I was going to ask that. What about the linebackers? Where, how are they progressing? How have you seen growth from them? Uh, how did you grade them on, on Saturday? Well, I, th I thought that uh, as a group, that was one of our, our best games. Uh, there was a lot of uh, strain, a lot of physicality. I thought we tackled well. Uh, you know, and, and again, there's some areas that we've got to get better at, uh, like most every area. But uh, I thought from overall, from a physicality and a production standpoint, uh, they did a nice job, and I was proud of them. Are there areas you can illustrate for us where they stepped, like, like Danny, for instance, uh, he might not have made that interception in week one or week three, but you know, week eight comes along and he sees things better, sees things that's happening slower for him, whatever it is. Yeah. Are there yeah. any illustrations like that? that yeah, with, his, with the, you know, the, um, the game reps that he's had now, because Danny's played a lot of football this year for us, uh, with the confidence and uh, the, the understanding of like where he fits, where he belongs on this call or that, you know, because every call there's a there's a responsibility in the run game and the pass game that goes along with it. Uh, so I think that uh, his certainly his comfort level and his confidence, and uh, he's put a lot of time and, and, and a lot of work into it. And uh, again, I think he's, he saw some of the fruits of his labor, but like. Like to my point earlier, you know, be, be able to play team defense where, like Danny had enough depth in his drop and forced the quarterback to elevate the throw, which Justin caught. So I mean, all it all goes hand in hand, hand together playing team defense. So, uh, yeah, he's we're getting better, but uh, like I said, we gotta.
got to get better real quick. Nice. Sure. Ted, for Jordan Kelly getting that sack, I mean, just what have, what have you seen from him? Is what's kind of been, I guess, his progression through the season? How'd you evaluate how he's playing? And I mean, it's another guy kind of like Deshaun that has this last year left. Yeah, uh, you know, that was a big play for us. Uh, in you know, because when you when you put teams behind the sticks, that's you know, then they become a lot more predictable. Uh, which you know, that was a big play for us with Jordan, and he's a guy that. Uh, you know, it's, it's been here a while and uh, is, is working hard to get better. And it was a big play for us in the game and uh, need, need more of those from him. Back right. I assume that with the defensive line and linebackers turning in one of their better games together and meshing together, that's not a coincidence that they kind of match up and play team defense together like that. Yeah, you know, with uh, again, with the, the increased reps, you know, of as far as and, and I thought the the plan for the open week, you know, I thought that uh, Coach Venables' the plan was excellent. You know, we were able to to get our work done and improve, and at the same time get fresh. And uh, but the cohesion of that and playing off, understanding where, where in this call where the defensive tackle is going to be and what gap you have and what happens if they do this or do that, there was an increased understanding. And uh, you know, again, we need to keep we need to keep going like that. Also, just continued confidence at the end of the day that those guys can go out there and play. Yeah, it increased. Yeah, I, I think that, that they play with more confidence um, Saturday, and as the game got going, uh, played with a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, and they played together, and uh, it was it was fun to watch. On Danny's interception, uh, I'm just curious. Maybe there's they're two totally different play calls. I was just curious. It seemed like when Iowa State scored their touchdown, it was kind of a, a crosser, maybe that crossed the face of Danny. And then later in the game, when he made the pick, it seemed like another route similar to that same route. I'm not sure if that had any sort of similarities to each other. Maybe he he learned from the previous play at all. I don't know if that was connected at all, or if you saw that in tape. And I'm just kind of curious your thoughts. Well, it, it, you're right. There were different calls, and, and it was they were different routes. But uh, yeah. The, the touchdown route was a you know we didn't do a very good job, um, and then obviously on his pick he did a, a great job. So, uh, but to, just kind of different and uh, but yeah. So it wasn't like a oh I saw this before now I'm going to see it again. It was it was two different plays. Yeah, but I tell you what there were some things in the game where like they saw it we saw it and got it communicated on the sidelines and got got things corrected and to be able to take that and apply it so the next time you go out. You get it fixed so the same thing doesn't keep happening over and over and over again. To your point, yeah, there was some of that. Yeah, which is a which is a wonderful thing. Yeah, sure. Quick follow, you're upstairs on the headset. Yeah. Are you, are you talking to the linebackers at that point? Are you talking to everybody or just coaching staff? Or? Everybody. Okay. Uh, I'm just wondering how you got that communication well, from. Well, we talked talk to the staff and the staff, uh, you know, gives the corrections and the adjustments that we need to to do and uh, you know so that part of it that's the communication piece sooner scoop hd